Bike Repeater presented by U.S. Army, inspired by a regional workout that first showed up in 2014. That one was a sprint and then a legless road climb. But now we're throwing in a hybrid bike. And, you know, we think that, like, it used to be about the legless right. road climb. Now it's not that at all. Now it's about the bike and how are they able to handle that. But I love the way it is. It's a down and back on the bike on in the grass with that legless rope climb, you know, using that, that throwback setup. This is going to be a very fun but very different race than we saw in that regional competition. All right, event eight. The bike repeater presented by the U.S. Army is underway. Bill, let's take a look at the keys for this event. Well, it, it all comes down to the details. That's why we say the devil is in the details. Not just about how can you ride a bike, but it's about transition. You'll watch them get down here to the end of the field. They have to get around that bike. They have to get back on that bike. How do they handle the gearings of the bike? What do they do with the rope climb, and how do they handle the rope climb? You, there are a lot of transitions and a lot of things to deal with, so the ones that can master those are going to be the best. After that, it's, about, it's all about the bike. You're going to spend the maximum amount of time on this event, on the bike. The rope climb nowadays is just a turnaround more than anything. It used to be this was a big deal, especially for the ladies, but that's not the case anymore. This really is a bike race. Katrin David's daughter in the light blue plants was the first woman to make the turn. She's in the lead. Tia Toomey is in second as they approach their first legless rope climb. Catherine was extremely excited about this event. She said earlier before we before this race even started, I love the bike. And because we're spending so much time on the bike, it's all about the bike. So she can even handle, if she's a little worried about the rope climb, she can handle taking a little bit of a break on there or getting through there because she'll make up the distance on that bike. Nice kip to the top. The Davis daughter was first to finish the first bike loop, but it was Tia Toomey who takes the lead on her first of 10 legless rope climbs. Leader's name, that is... Highlighted in blue will indicate that that person is leading the event. The number of repetitions that that woman has completed will be in the white box. The bike counts as one. The legless rope climb counts as one. So 20 total repetitions in this event, scored repetitions. And we saw there, there, that there was that change on the rope climb between Tia and Catherine. Catherine really came out hard on that first bike ride. And I think what's going to be important is push the first half of the bike push the, la the, the middle half of that bike and then that last quarter just kind of coast in so you have a little bit of a breather because you need to go directly from the bike and on the rope. You can't get to the rope and then sit there and wait. You don't have that, you don't have that ability to, uh, to afford that time loss. Tia Toomey slightly ahead of Katrin Davis' daughter on this second of 10 rounds. It'll be back to the rope and then one more legless rope climb and then hopping back on the bike. Two minutes, 25 seconds gone by so far and these athletes did get to practice on these bikes a little bit on Thursday. So it's not like they didn't have a chance to try and get used to that hybrid bike that they're riding as Tia Toomey has completed her second legless rope climb. Carrie Pierce just completed her second legless rope climb on the far side of your screen and she's moving back to the bike. So Pierce looking to challenge David's daughter for second place in this event as Tia Toomey now opening up a lead. Now we have said that this is all gonna be about the bike, but the, with that rope climb event, or the rope climb segment, it's about how you have to pull. We saw Catherine was doing the kip. We saw um, Tia was actually pulling hand over hand. Now we're on the bike, and it's that hybrid setup. These are not very heavy bikes, but they're very technical bikes. Um, they call it a hybrid because it has a smaller tire rather than your normal uh, mountain bike tire. But what I like to see with Catherine is she, I feel like she's pushing too much on the bike going into the rope. She should let herself have a little bit more of a, of a recovery going into the rope because if she's kipping this early, I'm afraid that that's going to be too much for her as we get to rope climb seven and eight. Tia Toomey is your leader here in round three. Katherine Davis' daughter has retaken second place from Carrie Pierce. Carrie Pierce is on the left side of your screen. Approaching the four minute mark, and Tia Toomey is off the bike. And on for her third legless rope climb. I mean, look at that. Immediately to the rope and very strong pulls. Just so fast. And she's getting faster and faster as we go. So, right there's that kip we were talking about. Now, if you watch Katrin's arm, she's using a lot of extra energy because her arms are never straight. Haley Adams right on the side, her arms were much straighter, and that's going to save that grip for the later rope climbs. That's, a, that's real important. 
Tia Toomey out front. She's in the white and red. Carrie Pierce is in second. Katrin Davis' daughter in third. And it looked like Haley Adams in fourth as Brooke Wells is just now getting back on her bike for round four. 20 total scored repetitions in this event. Tia Toomey is through six. Tia, look at that turnaround. We talked about the devil in the details. That was a beautiful turnaround. Came off the bike, fast around that cone, right back on. Ooh, and a little stumble there for Carey. Carey Pierce's hesitation there on the transition allows Catherine Davis' daughter to pull basically even with her now for second place. But it's Tia Toomey, as we have said for much of this competition, who is all by herself out front here. And she's getting set to close out round four. 10 total rounds here, 440 meters on the bike and a legless rope climb. Watch how fast this is. A running to the rope, chalking, no need, straight up. Look how fast that was. Beautiful. That shows a lot of power in that upper pulling. Now, in the past with rope climbs, there's usually a mark on the rope where the athletes have to control their descent below that mark. Once they're below that mark, they can then hop off. There's no mark here, so they can come down as quickly and as controlled or uncontrolled as they want. <laughs> and that's exactly how it was back in that regional event as well. Same thing. You can decide how much self-preservation you want to have on your own uh, on your own race. And if you remember, it was that event at the regionals in 2014 that kept Katrin Davis' daughter out of the game. So she's looking for a little bit of redemption here. Right now she is in uh, third place behind Carrie Pierce. It looks like Haley Adams may have moved into contention for second place as well. As now David's daughter and Adams are neck and neck. David's daughter is in the light blue pants. Haley Adams is on the right of your screen in lane five in that light tank top. And Carrie Pierce is on the left. And here comes Brooke Wells. So Brooke Wells is way behind right now as Tia Toomey is getting set to close out round five. I honestly feel like her seat's a little low. She would, I would hope she would want to have a little bit more of a, a top-end push on that. But, man, look at these ladies just really getting after it for that second-place position. Good battle developing for second place. Carrie Pierce off her bike first, right behind her. Catherine Davis, daughter, and Haley Adams. Meanwhile, Tia Toomey is done and back on. Look at the pulling of Carrie Pierce. And we know she has that strong upper body. Any kind of gymnastic pull, she's going to do really, really well. The only thing that's hanging her up is the transition on and off the bike. Now, Tia Toomey is through 10 of the 20 scored repetitions in this event. Halfway, Carrie Pierce is now in second. Haley Adams is is in third, and Katherine Davis' daughter has fallen back into fourth place. This is big for Carrie Pierce, because remember, she came in with 325 points, 65 back of Katherine Davis' daughter for second. If Pierce can hang on to second, and Davis' daughter finishes in fourth, Pierce can pick up about 40 points on her. It's just unbelievable how much these, this leaderboard is just jostling up and down with every single event. But I really think, I, as far as we, as much as I said it comes down to the bike, for these ladies, it's really coming down to the rope climb and how they're doing it. That's how Carrie Pierce is able to make up her distance, even with, with Haley Adams. These straight arms saving her arms on those rope climbs, whereas Katrin's bending her arms and blowing out so much energy on every single pull. And Tia Toomey cruising in for her sixth of ten legless rope climbs. And you wouldn't know Jeez. if this was her first, My her third, goodness. her sixth. It's the same it's every the time same. for your three-time defending champion. And she is now through six of those ten rounds. And here comes Carrie Pierce looking to hold off Haley Adams right now on the far side of the rig. Adams making the touch. So it's Pierce just ahead of Adams as they get back on the bike. And here comes Catherine David's daughter. But that's the lead that Tia Toomey has built here. It's just incredible how much our champions, both on the men's and the women's side, are just running their own race this entire weekend up to this point. So far, Tia Toomey split times in each round. The last five rounds have all, within, have all been within at least five seconds of each other. Incredible. Incredible. 
So Toomey through 12 of the 20 scored repetitions, making her way back to complete round seven of 10. Your overall leader with 570 points. She has a 180 point lead coming into this event. And now Haley Adams on the right has passed Carrie Pierce for second place. Now, one of the differences between Haley's rope climbs and Carrie Pierce's rope climbs, Carrie is very strong, so she does more of a rope climb like Tia does right here. But Haley has that big kip, and what's great about it is, is it's actually saving the number of pulls she has to do on that rope. So watch when she hops up in a big swing of her body. Starts there, big pop. Oh, now she's not. There's the pop that I wanted to see. So she gets that last little bit. This actually ends up being two extra saves or two pulls over what Carrie has to do there. Carrie Pierce makes a touch. She's in third. She and Adams came in tied in the, with the same amount of points. So they are looking to separate themselves from each other and try and get closer to that woman. But Tia Toomey, this is now just a leisurely bike ride in Morgan Hill for her right now. She's through seven of the ten rounds. This is round eight for her. And she's looking to win yet another event here. And may actually lap Brooke Wells. Eleven minutes gone by. This is the eighth of twelve events here at stage two of the 2020 Reebok CrossFit Games. See so her shaking out those arms, getting ready for this next rope climb, so she can hop right back up like she's done every single round. No chalk, which is a really incredible. I think most people, when they go to the rope, they think I need the chalk to hold on. That, yes, it helps, but that's just transition time. She's letting the speed of her bike dry her hands off for her. Toomey back in to close out round eight. Wow. Makes the touch. Beautiful. And now round nine. Here's the battle for second. Haley Adams right now is in second place behind Tia Toomey in this event. Carrie Pierce is in third. Both of them came in tied in points with 325, both 65 back of Katherine David's daughter. Brooke Wells sat in third with 350. So it's possible that Adams and Pierce could both leapfrog Brooke Wells here and Wells could find herself back in fifth place. Beautiful turn, beautiful turn. It's almost like it's robotic the way she just is able to get off, around, and back on that bike. There's no stumble at all. And we've talked about this in other events. There's no other heat, no other times to worry about. Tia Toomey does not need to go all out here. She can now throttle back and save herself for whatever awaits. You want to know what's crazy? Is I honestly think, and I mean, I'm looking at her splits. I'm honestly thinking that she is throttling back just a touch. She's not She's not putting the pedal to the metal. She's going fast. I mean, that's how good she is. But you can see that she's starting to slow down just a little bit, you know, just a touch. Just a couple seconds difference, just to give you an idea of her splits. For round two, it took her one minute, 24 seconds. Now here in round number nine, one minute, 30 seconds. So only a six second Crazy. difference there. Crazy. Crazy. And to be fair, most of the athletes have been relatively consistent here in their split times. Haley Adams has had about a 10-second difference right now. And Brooke Wells has had the biggest difference in her split times, about 18 seconds for her. But Tia Toomey now on her 10th and final round as she looks to pick up yet another event win here on her march towards four straight CrossFit Games championships. Haley Adams and Carrie Pierce fighting for second, and Katherine Davis' daughter trying to gain ground on the two of them. Final trip down for Tia Toomey. Incredible. Haley Adams on the right side of your screen. She's in second. Carrie Pierce 
is in third. And Pierce, you just saw her on the upper left-hand part of your screen getting set to make the turn. So Adams all by herself in second place. So Haley Adams is going to separate herself from Carrie Pierce and look to move up the overall leaderboard here. Tia Toomey's going to hang on to the overall lead and win yet another event. Tia Toomey is in, and Tia Toomey has 100 more points <laughs> and made it look easy. 1437.51 seconds. Didn't even look back at anybody. Just ran her, ra her own race the entire time. Haley Adams has made the touch, and she is in. So Haley Adams is going to lock up second place overall in this event, and she will earn 75 points. And here comes Kerry Pierce looking to finish third. So Adams is going to pick up 20 points on Kerry Pierce, and the two of them came in tied. So Adams getting the best of that battle. Pierce makes the touch, and she is in. That'll be good for 55 points for Kerry Pierce. Now Katrin David's daughter, who has fallen off the lead pace. She was pushing Tia Toomey early. And now she makes the touch, and she is across the finish line. So Katherine Davis out her 35 points in a fourth-place finish. And the good news is the woman right behind her was Brooke Wells, and she is going to take fifth. So Wells will only earn 15 points. So David Zotter will manage to stay ahead of Brooke Wells, while Haley Adams and Carrie Pierce look like they may leapfrog her on the overall leaderboard, so Wells may find herself back in fifth place overall. <laughs> the, the one unique thing about having only five athletes is that that leaderboard is constantly? I mean, other than it's volatile. Other than your champ, it, it, I mean, if you have a bad event, you feel it and you see it, and that leaderboard just drastically changes. Yeah, we were talking about it before we came on. You look at the numbers and you think, oh, that's an insurmountable lead, but that's knowing the old scoring right, system where right. three spots on the leaderboard were what sixteen, you know, seventeen, eighteen points at the worst. Now, you know, you can make up forty, you can make up eighty-five in yeah. one event. And here comes Brooke Wells. For her final rope climb, and that'll do it. So Brooke Wells, a fifth place finish. Haley, this was really a test of how fit are you in the gym? Yes, of course, but what can you do in real life outside of the gym as well? How do you train these types of events like with a bike out on a field? Like, how do I treat them? Yeah, how do you train for them? How oh, do you train outside train of the gym them? as well? Honestly, I feel like... I just kind of, you know, adapt pretty well. Yeah. So I didn't really get on a bike too much before coming to the game, so I can't really say I trained for it, but sure. I just like to think I can adapt pretty well. Yeah, speaking of adaptation, yeah. we've sort of seen all types of weather already in yeah. the last couple days. We go from the dark, cold mornings. Now it is pretty hot yeah, out hot. here on the floor. How is that affecting you? Um, it's actually, it's been way hotter competing before, so this is not too bad. It's, it's pretty mild, actually. And after, you know, almost two full days of competition, one event still to go, how is your body holding up at this point? Um, I had a pretty rough night last night. Um, had didn't just didn't rest well. My stomach was very upset and didn't feel myself this morning, but mm -hmm. I feel better this morning or this afternoon and I'm ready to finish the weekend. Nice. Well, congrats yeah. here. Good job. Thank you.